SpaceX engineers thought they'd never solve the COPA mystery. Then this happened. Ship 36 exploded. Ship after ship failed the same way. Engineers were stumped. The cursed Block 2 seemed doomed forever. But buried in classified test data, they found something nobody expected. A breakthrough so shocking it changes everything we know about rocket failures. Here's the crazy part. The fix was hiding in plain sight the entire time. And now? Flight 10 could be the redemption that saves Starship's reputation. But what if they're wrong? What if this miracle solution backfires spectacularly? Let's dive right in. Remember Ship 36? That catastrophic explosion wasn't just another test failure. It revealed SpaceX's darkest secret, a problem so complex that even NASA gave up trying to solve it. For months, engineers stared at the wreckage, completely baffled. The COPV, that's the high-pressure tank storing nitrogen gas, had exploded below its safety limit. Think about that. A tank rated for 100 pounds of pressure exploding at just 60 pounds. It's like a bulletproof vest failing against a rubber bullet. But here's what made engineers lose sleep. There were no warning signs, no cracks, no unusual readings, no red flags whatsoever. The vessel looked perfect right up until the moment it turned into shrapnel. This wasn't just embarrassing, it was terrifying. How do you trust a system that can kill your mission without any warning? SpaceX wasn't the first to face this nightmare. NASA had been wrestling with this exact problem for decades, spending over $50 million at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, testing more than 100 pressure vessels. The results? Completely inconclusive. The data was scattered, unreliable, almost useless. NASA's best scientists couldn't crack the code. They called it stress rupture, a failure mode so mysterious that it seemed to defy the laws of physics. Here's the terrifying part. Unlike normal failures that give you warnings, vibrations, temperature spikes, pressure drops, stress rupture strikes like lightning. One second, everything's perfect. The next second, you're picking up pieces. NASA tried everything. Mathematical models, computer simulations, accelerated testing. Nothing worked. The composite materials would fail at random intervals, sometimes after hours, sometimes after years. No pattern, no predictability, no solution. But what if I told you that SpaceX found something NASA missed? Something hiding in plain sight for over 30 years? Fast forward to July 6th at SpaceX's McGregor facility. That wasn't just another test explosion. It was a controlled demolition designed to unlock secrets that had stumped the world's brightest minds. SpaceX took a radically different approach. Instead of waiting years for natural failures, they used extreme temperatures to accelerate the aging process. What normally takes months now happens in hours. But here's the genius part. They didn't just blow things up randomly. They ran systematic torture tests in four precise phases. Phase 1, 130 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate acceleration to reach statistical midpoints. Phase 2, 160 degrees Fahrenheit, aggressive testing beyond normal limits. Phase 3, increased pressure above maximum operating levels. Phase 4, over 170 degrees Fahrenheit until catastrophic failure. Each phase revealed crucial data about how these vessels actually fail in real-world conditions. Data that NASA never had access to. Data that could predict the unpredictable. SpaceX had learned this lesson the hard way before. September 1, 2016. A Falcon 9 exploded on the launch pad, destroying a $200 million satellite and nearly ending their NASA partnership. The culprit? A co-PV failure that should have been impossible. Elon's response was nuclear. Complete redesign, new materials, new manufacturing processes. They built what Elon called the most advanced pressure vessels ever developed. The result? Over five years and hundreds of launches without a single copy failure. But here's the catch. Falcon 9 operates in a completely different environment than Starship. Higher pressures, longer flight times, more extreme temperature swings. The old solution wouldn't work. Starship needed something revolutionary, something that had never been done before. Those test results from McGregor didn't just confirm theories, they shattered them. 
The failure modes SpaceX observed were completely different from NASA's historical data. The composite materials behaved in ways no existing model could predict. The failure progression followed patterns that defied conventional wisdom. Everything engineers thought they knew about pressure vessel physics was wrong, but wrong in a good way. The actual failure mechanisms were more predictable than anyone imagined. Once you understand the real physics, preventing failure becomes an engineering problem, not a guessing game. Here's what blew everyone's mind. The key wasn't in the materials or the manufacturing. It was in the testing protocol. SpaceX developed a way to predict COPV lifespan with unprecedented accuracy. But here's where the stakes become insane. Flight 10 isn't just another test flight. It's the moment of truth for the entire Starship program. Only two Block 2 ships remain before the transition to Block 3. If Flight 10 fails due to COPV issues, it doesn't just lose one ship. It potentially destroys SpaceX's credibility and delays Mars colonization by years. Think about the pressure. Hundreds of millions in development costs, thousands of jobs, the future of human spaceflight, all riding on pressure vessels that killed Ship 36. But there's an even scarier scenario. Flight 10 will conduct its static fire test at Pad A, the same infrastructure used for actual launches. If the ship explodes during testing, they don't just lose Ship 37, they lose their primary launch facility. One COPV failure could cascade into losing everything. The entire Starship program could grind to a halt. Block 2, Starship has earned a reputation as the cursed version. Multiple failures, setbacks, and now this COPV nightmare threatening to end everything. Engineers started whispering. Fans began questioning. Is Block 2 fundamentally flawed? Should SpaceX scrap it entirely and move to Block 3? But what if the curse is about to be broken? What if all these failures were necessary stepping stones to the ultimate breakthrough? The test data suggests SpaceX has finally cracked the stress rupture code. They now understand not just when these vessels fail, but why. More importantly, they know how to prevent it. Here's what most people don't realize. SpaceX isn't using off-the-shelf COPVs anymore. The McGregor test proved that commercial pressure vessels simply can't handle the extreme demands of interplanetary flight. So they're going completely custom. New liner materials that can withstand higher temperatures. Enhanced composite wrapping using proprietary fiber orientations. Revolutionary manufacturing techniques that push the boundaries of what's physically possible. But the real breakthrough isn't in the hardware. It's in quality control. SpaceX now inspects every single fiber, every weld, every component with techniques borrowed from the nuclear industry. They're not just building pressure vessels. They're building the most reliable pressure vessels in human history. If Flight 10 succeeds, it validates more than just the COPV fix. It proves that Block 2 isn't cursed. It's evolved. Every failure, every setback, every explosion was data leading to this moment. But the implications go far beyond one successful flight. Reliable COPVs are the key to everything SpaceX wants to achieve. Mars missions, moon bases, deep space exploration. None of it works without pressure vessels you can trust with your life. The vessels that seem like SpaceX's biggest weakness might just become their greatest competitive advantage. Right now, Ship 37 sits waiting for its moment of truth. Three weeks to launch. Engineers working around the clock, implementing lessons learned from months of explosive testing. Every component carries the weight of SpaceX's future. Get it right, and Block 2 becomes the foundation for Mars exploration. Get it wrong, and the cursed reputation becomes permanent. The modified test stand at Pad A has been reinforced with heavy steel plates designed to withstand the immense forces of Raptor engines. But can it survive a COPV explosion? No one knows for sure. Static fire testing is scheduled to begin any day now. The same test that destroyed Ship 36 could either vindicate SpaceX's solution or doom the entire program. But SpaceX learned another crucial lesson from Flight 9's failure. Single points of failure are unacceptable. When a leak dropped main tank pressure, the ship lost attitude control and started spinning uncontrollably. For Flight 10, they're implementing revolutionary redundancy. Independent reaction control systems that don't rely on main tank pressure, enhance flight algorithms that can use aerodynamic surfaces for control, even if all thrusters fail. If the primary COPV system fails, 
backup systems kick in automatically. If those fail, the ship can still complete its mission using aerodynamic control alone. But redundancy only works if you survive long enough to use it. If the COPV explodes in the first few minutes of flight, no backup system can save the mission. Stress rupture isn't just an engineering problem, it's a physics nightmare. At the molecular level, composite fibers are constantly breaking and reforming under pressure. Over time, these microscopic failures accumulate until the entire structure suddenly collapses. The terrifying part? This happens even at pressures well below the vessel's rated capacity. It's like a bridge that's perfectly safe for cars suddenly collapsing under the weight of a bicycle. The physics just don't make intuitive sense. Temperature makes everything worse. Higher heat accelerates the fiber degradation process exponentially. A Kio PV that might last years at room temperature could fail in hours at elevated temperatures. This is why Starship's environment is so challenging. The vessels face extreme temperature swings during launch, coast, and re-entry. Traditional designs simply can't handle this thermal stress cycle. When SpaceX shared their test results with NASA, the response was immediate disbelief. The data showed failure patterns that contradicted decades of accepted science. But independent verification confirmed the impossible. SpaceX had discovered a new failure mode that existing models couldn't predict. More importantly, they'd found a way to prevent it. The solution involved redesigning the composite layup at the molecular level. Instead of traditional fiber orientations, SpaceX developed proprietary patterns that distribute stress more evenly. The result? Co-PVs that are actually stronger at elevated temperatures. It's like discovering that steel gets stronger when you heat it. Completely counterintuitive, but absolutely real. Every day matters now. SpaceX has committed to landing humans on Mars by 2029. That timeline depends entirely on Starship reliability, which depends entirely on solving the copy problem. Flight 10 isn't just about proving the technology works. It's about proving it works reliably enough to bet human lives on it. NASA won't approve crewed missions until SpaceX demonstrates bulletproof reliability. The pressure vessels that nearly killed the Starship program could become the key to making life multiplanetary. But only if Flight 10 succeeds, three weeks, one ship, the future of human spaceflight hanging in the balance, will the breakthrough hold, or will stress rupture strike again when it matters most? So here we are. SpaceX has cracked the code that stumped NASA for decades. The COPV mystery that destroyed Ship 36 might just become the breakthrough that saves Flight 10. But this story goes deeper than just fixing pressure vessels. It's about humanity's willingness to push beyond what seems impossible. Every explosion, every failure, every setback brought us closer to this moment. In three weeks, we'll know if the cursed Block 2 can redeem itself. If SpaceX's revolutionary solution actually works under real flight conditions, if the road to Mars truly runs through McGregor, Texas, the data looks promising. The engineering is solid, but spaceflight has a way of humbling even the most confident predictions. What fascinates me most? This might be just the beginning. If SpaceX can solve stress rupture, what other impossible problems become solvable? What other barriers to Mars colonization suddenly disappear? The next few weeks will reshape everything we thought we knew about rocket reliability. But here's my question for you. When Flight 10 launches, will you be watching just another test flight? Or witnessing the moment humanity truly became a spacefaring species? Let me know what you think happens next. The ISS is dying faster than expected. Cracks spreading, air bleeding into space, and Elon Musk just made a shocking decision. Kill it in two years, even though SpaceX earns billions from ISS missions. Why would he destroy his own gold mine? What does he know that we don't? And here's the terrifying part. We could wake up tomorrow to catastrophic failure with zero warning. Let's dive right in. Here's what NASA doesn't want you to know. Every single day, the ISS completes 16 death-defying orbits around Earth. Each orbit subjects this aging laboratory to temperature swings from 250 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. For 30 years, this massive structure has been flexing like a paperclip. And just like that paperclip, 
it's finally starting to snap. The crisis began in 2019 when Russian cosmonauts discovered something terrifying, a small leak in the Zvezda module. Not just any leak, but a crack in the very walls that keep astronauts alive. At first, it seemed manageable. A few pounds of air lost per day. Patch it up, move on. But the leak kept growing and growing. Space expert Casey Hanmer dropped a bombshell that sent chills through the space community. There is no factor of safety associated with this failure mode. We are not even single fault tolerant on the structural integrity of the station. Translation, if this gets worse, astronauts could have less than 60 seconds to escape a catastrophic decompression. But here's the question that keeps everyone awake. How long before the ISS becomes a death trap? While NASA burns through 10 to $11 million every single day just to keep the ISS operational, SpaceX has quietly been proving something shocking. They can launch payloads for $62 million per mission. NASA's space launch system, $4 billion per launch. That's not a typo. SpaceX is literally 65 times cheaper. The numbers get even more brutal. A 2022 study revealed that SpaceX isn't just 10 times cheaper than NASA. They have 30 times fewer cost overruns. While NASA takes years to prepare a single SLS mission, SpaceX launches rockets every few days. In 2024 alone, SpaceX completed 134 launches. NASA, they celebrated finally getting SLS off the ground twice. But here's where it gets interesting. Despite making billions from ISS contracts, Musk wants to destroy his own cash cow. Why would any CEO voluntarily kill their most profitable venture? The answer lies in SpaceX's latest breakthrough, the Raptor 3 engine. When engineers first saw it, they thought SpaceX was playing a joke. This couldn't possibly be a complete rocket engine. It looked like a skeleton compared to previous versions. But the specs are mind-blowing. 560,000 pounds of thrust. That's 100,000 pounds more than Raptor 2. Specific impulse of 350 seconds, rivaling engines that took decades to develop. And here's the kicker, 